What a what a not lovely day out. Patio chairs blowing away. The uh, basketball hoop blew in the tree. Wow. Gust of 65 a day. Yep. Hi, I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. I'm Tony Fastadder. My family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior Jesus Christ. Well, since I'm not real excited about being outside in the wind today, if we can get to it, we're gonna start draining some oil and the bogies on that. They've got, we haven't changed all the oil in that tractor yet. We've changed a lot of seals, unfortunately. But they just came out with a new oil here not too long ago. That's the same oil for the big rollers as well as the small idlers. So that'll be nice to be using instead of the two different kinds that they used to recommend. So we're gonna get those changed. There's a couple seals that are leaking. That we haven't changed yet, I don't think. I don't know. We're gonna switch them, keep switching over everything that's leaking to the trackfarmer.com's new system. We actually put an internal seal in there. And I wanna get this tractor out of here too, and that one. But this one keeps on bleeding off fuel pressure when it sits for a while. Somehow it's getting air in the system. So loose filter, I don't know, we're gonna dig into that. And this old girl, Found some rims on Abilene Machine for it. But before I order rims, I wanna make sure it still runs. It ran when we parked it, so I think it's still fine. We just lost that wheel, it split on us. So that is the other thing we wanna work on. And uh, it looks like I found a problem. That's a little bit loose. Lights are shaking. The elk is shaking, heater shaking, the tie rods are shaking. Boy, another lovely Montana day. Well, that doesn't make any sense that this line's in the way, so I'm gonna turn that a little bit. Find the right wrench here. Should be fine like that. Oh my goodness. That thing was seriously loose. Found a fuel leak problem. Did you? Yeah, this filter was like over a half a turn loose. Oh. I don't know why, but what else would cause an air problem. Oh yeah. That'd be it. That's pretty nice. So, and it would also, like, be the reason why there's a bunch of dirty diesel dirt down there. Oh, yeah. Makes sense now. Yeah. Well, see as we'll start up now. <laughs> that door is really annoying. Oh, there we go. Let's go prime it. Or bleed the air off the secondary filter at least. There we go. Fuel now, fuel pump cut out. Go for it, Colin. Well, I got the cab all vacuumed out. We'll uh, probably wait to wash that all up till we bring it out in the spring. And uh, yeah, if it fires up in the morning, we'll put it in the shed. It'll be done for the year, get it out of our way in here. So we can bring another project in. 
What's your next project going to be, Colin? I don't know. We, uh, I got a sandblaster, access to a sandblaster, so maybe we'll get that teal truck frame fixed. That. Make that all nice, nice and shiny again. I guess we should probably fix that bushing too on the green truck. Oh yeah. And auger engines need oil changes and grease and conveyors and... Aren't you excited? Why? Yep. Yeah. Is it dead? No, We're look. checking battery. Yeah, I'd say it's a bad battery. Let's uh... How are you supposed to put a new battery in that? That doesn't fit. Pull the whole hood off, I guess, huh? Imagine how far you could go flying with one of those like parasail kites or windsurfing kites today. Well, you would make it to... I think you have a Bismarck in a week. Yeah. <laughs> you step outside and then you go like this and just go back by you. Feet. You pull away a little easier than I would. Yeah, it is a little <laughs> How in the world did this get in there? Oh, I thought that was a. Uh, thought something sparked. <laughs> I got my heart racing. <laughs> get the wrench in there. Half oh, it should be half inch. Yeah. Oh. Bond safe. Later on, we can use. Oh, it's a Freightliner mud flat. <laughs> Nice. Because that's all rusted out. Oh, let's see if we find a battery for this. It's heavier, that's for sure. Alright. For testing purposes only. <laughs> Will it spin over? That is the question. So. Well, this is what you saw. Something seems locked up. The starter doesn't want to turn. How can we turn that to see if the engine's locked up? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can gauge a PTO maybe and turn the PTO shaft. Well, with the uh, PTO engaged, you can't turn it. I'm no expert on this kind of stuff, but I'm thinking that means that the engine seized up because if you can turn that shaft, you should be able to turn the engine through that. But I could be wrong. Well, we pulled the starter off and uh, Bad news is the starter works. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably on the uh, flywheel. Yeah, why don't you hold something for me? Camera and flash, that'd be great. Yeah, no good. He seized up. Suddenly I have no interest in buying wheels. <laughs> uh. I uh, pulled a spark plug out and there's some moisture in there. My guess is the rings are rusted to the cylinder wall. So maybe dump a little diesel fuel, some ATF, something in the in the spark plug holes and let it sit for a couple days. Cause uh, what's that gonna hurt? Looks so don't worry guys, I do have a new screen protector coming. There we go, that's a little better. Well, it threw, squirted a little ATF in there, talking to some buddies, they said that's better than diesel fuel. So put a little bit in all of them and put a lot in the one cylinder that's got a little rusty. A couple of plugs came out a little rusty, so we'll uh, let this sit for a while. Come back to it another day. What? <laughs> oh, I didn't see anything. <laughs> Do you get camera shy? No. <laughs> well, Colin stuck the spark plugs back in. I got the starter on. Everything's kind of closed back up. We'll let that sit for a few days. Now, do some uh, oil changes on the bogey wheels. 
I'm just waiting for that thing to come flying out and get you. I know why. That's why I'm being careful. Why are they supposed to? <laughs> yeah, that's what you hope doesn't happen. That's why they get called the old Jesus clip because they come flying out. And they go flying across the shop. It's loose and they used to go another clip for another, another whatever. There you go. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Scare ya? Yeah, and it popped me in the kneecap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna feel that one in the morning. Well, good morning. Well, the wind still blowing. It's nothing like it was yesterday. Don't have the heavy sustained winds and high gusts anymore. It's probably half of what it was yesterday, so. Well, it looks like those have drained pretty well. They're not dripping anymore. We'll get those closed back up, put that new oil in, start the next one draining, then maybe tonight, do the same thing. Put the caps back on those, start the next ones draining. Well, we keep it pretty cold in the shop so oil does not drain real fast. But it been a lot better to do this when it was 90 outside, but those days are gone for a while anyways. And uh, yeah, I gotta do a little office stuff. Well, the girls are ready to do some chores, which gets me out of office work, because they want a little help. Sounds good to me. Oh. We need a pitchfork, babe. How's the feeder working? Good, but we need a pitchfork. Well, we'll have to buy some, because uh, at least some handles, because our I, handles are broken. I know it's the worst. Well, I think, uh, <laughs> I think we got a winner here. The girls, uh, got... Yeah, we know yeah we'll hungry. feed you in a minute. Girls got themselves a colt. Little filly. Little filly that, uh, we're we in the process of weaning right now, and we're excited. She is super calm. I think she's gonna make a, make a great horse for the girls to work with. And, yeah, look at that, just rub her anywhere you want. This is actually like day three of weaning, so she's she's pretty calm. We're pretty pretty excited. Time to try the hoser. Come on, guys, go get your food. <laughs> oh. Colin told me I need to come look at the swather. <laughs> he was right. It was a little windy yesterday, as you know, and uh... That looks like an insurance claim to me. Oh, oh really? Well, what else am I going to do? I bet you that was like four grand worth of damage. Oh, I didn't see that it was cracked. Oh yeah, it's destroyed. No. Luckily the window didn't get broke. You're right. And your nobody's fixed your windshield wiper thank lady either. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know you thought the wind had just whipped that off there. Swath in the rain, so. You'd have wished you would have thought that would have just whipped it off of there. I'm gonna go look and see what else got blowing around yesterday. See, we're missing some grain bags off the gooseneck. Well, there's one of them. By the fuel tanks. That one's there. Kind of wondering if our uh, shooting table is still out in the pasture. Oh, let's head out there quick. Well, good. That's still there, but we lost some shuttles to the wind. Got stuck in the fence from out here at the junk pile. And uh, I didn't see my gong. My gong is gone. Wind must have tipped it over. No, I found it. It's still there. Just really hard to see from 
the way the sun's shining. Man, that dam is low this year. Like six feet lower than it was last year. Wow. Well, Colin, we now have some wall art for the shop. <laughs> Roof's top's cracked. The surround around the back's cracked. Hood's destroyed. What's your guess? Five grand? Six grand? Yeah, probably that. Six grand. Yep. Call an insurance company. It must have just rattled around enough that it hooked it and or unlatched itself. I don't know. Maybe something flew up and hit the latch. I don't know. I, just, I never would have thought that would have come on hooked. I would have never thought the same until I drove up and then looked out when I was walking to the shop. So I'm like, what is that? And I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Decoration. I don't know. Win some, you lose some. Next ones are draining. We're gonna fire up this 370. See if our uh, fuel problem is fixed. Tin tore out. Boy, glad thing the wind went down when it did because that's gonna take off. We gotta get some more screws put in that tomorrow. I'll bring some over. Well, get the rock picker tractor going here now. Got that running. Colin's gonna go get the other tractor jump started. It was a little bit weak this morning. The batteries were coolest morning we've had so far. Well, I got just a few more of these bigger rock piles on this first stretch to clean up with the loader and Colin. Got the cultivator hooked up behind the 200. He's gonna go along and just start picking at those real gently. See if we can't roll those rocks out of the ground. Then we'll take the Degelman rock picker along, pick whatever is left on the surface. And that should finish it up for the, until we're ready to start planting next year. And then we'll see what more rocks we fill up with the, with the air drill. Definitely some big rocks out there yet. Pulling up rocks. Just kind of putzing along, kind of letting it do its thing so I don't break no shanks, not trying to go too deep. Yeah. Seems to be pulling up quite a bit of rocks there once I feel the tractor jerk and there's some pretty big ones that come up. And some little ones. And then there's you got a little spring action comes, so you got to be careful, the rocks might come hit me in the window. That would not be good. <laughs> All parts are off. Well, I got a lot of those little rock piles pushed into bigger rock piles, so that'll be nice for loading the truck tomorrow. The wind's supposed to die down quite a bit tomorrow, so we'll start hauling up these rock piles. And those rock piles are out of here. Keep on working on them with the rock picker and maybe that uh, cultivate a little more just to pick at them. I think we're going to gain about four acres on this field, which doesn't seem like a lot, but at least we'll be farming all the way up the road, have a nice smooth transition.
position in the field. We don't have to worry about rocks crossing things with combines and trucks and whatnot. So it's gonna make it pretty handy. And we're done. Well, as I was finishing editing this video, I took a look at the GoFundMe for Kelly. You guys are doing awesome. It was twelve thousand dollars they had already raised before we posted the last video, and it's almost at twenty-four thousand already. So. Thank you guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the link's in the description for the GoFundMe. There's an explanation there, or you can go watch the last video. Amy and I threw little uh, tidbits in and a little, you know, telling what's going on. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, like and subscribe, and farm hard, pray harder. See you next video.